So I've designed my own book cover. Maybe you've designed your own book cover, but is it really gonna be all that good? Today, we're gonna be talking about how to design a book cover that doesn't suck, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale L. Roberts, a best-selling author as well as a self-publishing advocate who wants to show you how to publish books that sell. You want that too? Make sure that you subscribe, of course, and also join me on Mondays at 12 p.m. Eastern Daytime at twitch.tv slash self-publish where we talk more about how to write and publish books that sell. And if you have your Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free and get a few freebies in the process. So I just finished my book cover design for my very next launch and I am excited to share it. Hey Dale, what you got there? Rob, how did you get in? Oh, uh, don't sweat it. I've just been hanging out here since our last interview together. <laughs> The whole time? Um, yeah, but it's not a big deal. Including... Uh... Um, yeah, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh. But hey, let's go ahead and have a look at that cover, huh? Sure thing! Oh, uh, hmm. Oh, okay, take it away, buddy. Well, Dale, that's, uh, that's great. Uh, congrats on that. I think it's awesome that you tried. Uh, it's not always easy to make your own cover. So, um, yeah, I think, I think let's, uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the common cover mistakes that authors can make when trying to create their own cover. So I've got four different ideas for you. Number one, you don't know your market. So what do I mean by that? When you are creating your cover, sometimes authors have this idea that they are going to create something totally new and original and out of the box and they don't want to speak in cliches they don't want to look like every other cover out there that is in their genre they want to be totally distinctive and original and that's great that's a nice idea and that's a nice sentiment and and uh, sort of goal but when you're creating co a cover you really do need to speak in cliches you want your cover to be immediately recognizable by the people in your target demographic by people who are looking for the sorts of book that you're creating you know, hopefully you know your genre, you're familiar with what it's about, you're a fan or you've done your market research and you kind of know what people are looking for and you want to provide them that. You want to signal to them almost immediately that yes, this is a, uh, a book that belongs with all those other books that you, you know and love already. One specific example of that, if you have a, a men's health or a men's fitness book, you know, if you look on, uh, on Amazon, most of those are going to have some sort of athletic male figure, you know, often in some sort of athletic movement, you know, doing a push up or, you know, doing some sort of sport or something like that. If your uh, men's health book or, or men's fitness book is a, um, a floral arrangement with pastel colors, you're just asking to be ignored. You know, you have to speak to the conventions of your genre, at least somewhat to signal to people that you, you belong, that you know what you're talking about and you're worth paying attention to. Number two, you are trying to do too much. So when you are creating your cover, keep in mind that most people are going to see it at least for the first time. You, your um, broader audience, the people who don't already know you, they're gonna see you on a little one by one inch Amazon thumbnail. Your cover has to look cohesive. It can't really be too busy. You don't want it to have so much going on that it's gonna be distracting or, or not appealing. And um, you also don't wanna necessarily tell, try and tell a story with your, your cover all by itself. So for example, we had a, uh, an author whose initial vision was basically a, a six panel comic, you know, describing the contents of their book. And, you know, it was kind of clever and, and a nice idea, but uh, in terms of visual execution, there was just too much going on. It was not going to capture the attention of their, their broader perspective audience. And so we encouraged them to consider something else and, and they were really happy ultimately um, going with something a little bit more simple and streamlined and, and more direct to the message that you were uh, trying to convey. One other thing that you will sometimes see when authors are trying to do too much is they have some sort of Easter egg, some sort of reference to uh, the, the narrative, something that goes on in the book later, some sort of um, something that is going to be noticeable to people who are, um, who've already read the book, but those aren't the people that you're trying to, to reach out to. You don't want to create uh, some sort of visual cue for people who've read the book when you're trying to attract people who have not yet read the book. So you don't want to necessarily do too much. Simplicity, uh, in many cases, go is going to be beneficial. Number three is poor graphic selection. So the first and, and maybe the most paramount for a, uh, a commercial author 
is you want to make sure that you have the license to the book. You have the rights to use this cover, uh, the cover image. You don't want to just pull something uh, from Google or from someone's own personal website that you don't have the access to or don't have permission to. Just make sure that your ducks are uh, all lined up and in a row and that you're not subjecting yourself to any liability when you're selecting your graphics. But other things that sometimes people will see when they uh, create these graphics or create covers that are issues with graphics, if the graphic is not high resolution, you know, some sort of low res grainy image may look okay on your desktop or laptop as you're putting the book together, but when you're actually using it to print on the cover of, a, um, of an actual print book, then uh, it may not look as good. So just make sure that the image is of an appropriate resolution for what you're trying to accomplish. Another thing, just make sure that the, the images are appropriate. That, for example, on Amazon, you know, you're not permitted certain sorts of um, of imagery, nudity, or um, swear words, or you know, that kind of thing. Just make sure that the images that you use are not going to disqualify you from even entering the marketplace. And then the fourth issue with poor graphic selection is poorly manipulated images. You know, it's they're not blended appropriately. There's no there's no gradient. Maybe you see some sharp edges and, and it looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint. You don't wanna do that. If you're putting a book cover together, you wanna to make sure that everything, again, kind of blends and flows and um, is integrated in some sort of cohesive whole. Fourth and final issue that sometimes people will see, your text is lousy or it's in the wrong place. So that doesn't, that kind of doesn't necessarily speak to a sp uh, particular font. Probably lots of different fonts could work depending on the genre, genre that you're in, but you want to make sure that your font is uh, is appropriate. You know, follow the lead of what the other books that are performing well in your category already are doing. Don't uh, don't choose something that's totally out of left field. Um, or if you're using multiple different types of fonts, know what you're doing. Don't blend two different things just because you kind of like them uh, if they don't go together visually. And you have to have a decent eye for. Uh, for design in order to figure that out. There are lots of resources out there so you can kind of do a little research, but just make sure that it's not drawing attention away um, from, you know, from your book and making it interesting, creating some sort of clashing effect that makes people not as interested in clicking through. Uh, and then the other issue with, with text choices is make sure it's not blocking important cover elements. You know, something, for example, if it's a genre where you have your own image on there, uh, it may be self-evident, but I'll say it anyway, don't have uh, text over your face or don't have text over important elements of whatever else is going on visually with your, uh, with your graphics or other elements of the book. Just make sure that it's an appropriate sort of placement on the cover. Again, you want to look like you belong among the top performers in your genre and that you are a peer among those great and successful people that you're trying to speak uh, speak to or the audience that you're trying to speak to. Folks, if you wanna learn more about my thoughts on whether you should select matte or glossy for your next print cover, click on the link right down below.